Money Time at Money 9 English is back on the middle of the week. I am Ajay and here is what made headlines today. First, we begin with some entertainment news. Netflix has further slashed subscription rates in more than 100 countries excluding India. The entertainment OTT player had reduced subscription rates by up to 60% in India back in 2021. Of late, the streaming platform has stuck to the strategy of providing cheap subscription plans. This has helped Netflix clock 24% growth on year-on-year -year India revenue in 2022. It has also helped in increasing viewership on its app. With success in this strategy, Netflix is now looking to continue to offer cheaper, pl cheaper plans to consumers. Netflix is also expected to keep subscription rates lower in India as well. Moving on, citizens in New Delhi will soon get relief from high ride fares levied during peak hours by cabs like Ola and Uber. The Delhi government is in the process of bringing a policy according to which ride-hailing cabs will not be able to charge high fees during peak hours. Currently, companies like Ola, Uber etc. are allowed to double the rate fare during peak hours. But the Arvind Kejriwal government is in a process of removing this provision of surge pricing. The removal of surge pricing will provide commuters relief from paying high ride fares at the time of booking cabs during peak hours. Apart from this, Delhi government is looking to ban sharing of cabs by citizens in the national capital. Up next, Tata Motors has officially started accepting bookings for all new Tata Altros iCNG. Customers can book the CNG variant of Altros for just 21,000 rupees. Deliveries will commence in May 2023. Tata has not unveiled the pricing of this model. According to most of auto websites, the model is expected to be priced between 7.5 lakh rupees and 9.5 lakh rupees. There are four variants of this model. The model is available in four different shades. Tata's latest offering is expected to commence compete with the likes of Maruti Swift, Baleno and Hyundai High 10. The Income Tax Department clarified on Wednesday that the government has no intentions to levy high taxes on the rich and the affluent to mitigate the problem of income inequality in India. It was reported in the media that the government was mulling levy of high capital gains tax on the rich citizens of the country. But the IT department has said in a tweet, and I quote, it is clarified that there is no such proposal before the government on capital gains tax. According to experts, hike in capital gains tax would not have been a good news for the stock market. IT department's clarification soothed bearish fears in the market. Moving on, few of the companies have declared dividend for shareholders. Let's see which are those. Tata Group company Tata Coffee has declared a dividend of 3 rupees per share for FY23. Jindal Stainless has declared a special interim dividend of 1 rupee per share for shareholders. The record date is April 26, 2023 and the dividend will be paid by May 17. General Insurance Company ICICI Lombard, on the other hand, has recommended a dividend of 5.5 rupees for its shareholders for FY23. We now move on to banking. RBL Bank has launched an innovative digital fixed deposit scheme exclusively for new customers. Investors can get up to 7.8% interest rate for a period of 15 months to 725 days. But new customers will have to open a savings account in order to avail of high interest rates being offered on the digital FD scheme. New customers can open a savings account with a bank without visiting the bank branch. But in case of regular fixed deposits, account holders can also get similar interest rate of 7.8% for a period of 15 months. The private bank will give 7% interest on one-year FDs. Senior citizens will get additional rate of 0.5% on all these FDs, including the special FD scheme. Sticking on with banking, Bank of Maharashtra has also raised interest rates on fixed deposits. Account holders can get as high as 7% on 200 days FD, while on 400 days FD, depositors will get 6.75% on minimum of 2 crore rupees. The Pune-based bank will give 6.35% on FDs of 1 year. On 5-year FDs, account holders will get 5.75% rate of interest. On the shortest tenure of 7 days, account holders will get 2.75% interest. Bank of Maharashtra gives 0.5% on 
additional rate to senior citizens on all FDs of more than 90 days tenure. And looks like more layoffs can hit the tech industry. According to media reports, Facebook's parent company Meta Platforms is again considering fresh job cuts on worldwide scale. Meta Platforms has notified managers to prepare to announce job cuts on Wednesday. The move is a part of a cost-cutting plan that Meta had announced back in 2022. The company had already cut around 11,000 jobs back in November last year. We move on to some IPO news. Drug maker Mankind Pharma has fixed a price ban of 1,026 to 1,080 rupees a share for its 4,326 crore rupees IPO. The initial share sale of the drug maker will, will be open for public subscription on April 25. The company's IPO is entirely an offer for sale by promoters and other existing shareholders. 35% of the issue size has been reserved for retail investors, 50% for QIBs and the remaining 15% for NIIs. Now, India's homegrown smartphone manufacturer Lava has started the sale of Lava Blaze 2 smartphone on Amazon. The affordable smartphone is avail available at a price of 8,999 rupees on Amazon. The 13 megapixel camera smartphone is available in black, blue, and orange shades. It sports a 6.5 inch screen, 8 megapixel selfie camera, 1 micro SD card slot, and 5000 mAh battery. The smartphone houses 4GB RAM with 128GB storage capacity. And wrapping it up with data on mutual fund industry. Inflows through mutual fund SIPs have increased three times in the last seven years. Mutual funds had received SIPs of just over 43,000 crore rupees back in the financial year 2017. In the recently concluded financial year, that is in FY23, mutual funds garnered north of 1.56 lakh crore rupees. According to Kotak Mahindra AMC, investors continue to believe in the long-term growth story. They have continued to add investments through SIPs and lump sum. According to brokerage firm Fires, investors have chosen mutual funds as the preferred route for investments. At the end of March this year, Total SIP AUM of the mutual fund industry stood at 6.83 lakh crore rupees, while the total number of SIP accounts stood at 6.36 crores. That's all for today here on Money Time at Money9 English. This is me, Ajay, signing off. Take care and good night.